All right. Namaste, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We got my brother here, Matt Hastings. Hello. Nice to be here. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, man. I appreciate it. So, Matt, how, where did we meet? How do we know each other? What's our journey together? Yeah, we met right here, actually, uh, at the Heartland Retreat Center. Um, as I showed up for, um, it was cohort 52 in May of 22. Yeah. For Warriors Ascent. You know, you looked a little different because you had that uh, long hair. You had some pretty long hair at the time. Down here. I might even had Hannah. Sometimes I get Hannah I put on. I don't remember that, but I remember you come walking in and, you know, you had pretty dressed the way you are normally and you had beads on. And I didn't, I, I kind of knew what those were, but uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, and I smell the incense in the air. And it's like, I, I mean, I grew up around, you know, I'm going to call you a hippie. Yeah. I was uh, hippie vibe, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like, and I'm like, I don't know. At the time, I was like, listen, I- I'm here and I'm going to open my eyes and ears and heart to er- anything I can do right now. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 And so what was, um, what's it like being back here today? Yeah, it's kind of strange because this is the, this is the porch in yeah. which I don't know how often they stay up here in this, uh, this certain cabin, but this was the cabin we stayed at. And so I would get up early. I'm going to really, really rise. And I'd sit out here on these steps and just kind of watch the morning come up. Behind us, there's an enormous oak tree. It looks like it's huge. huge. Destroy every car parked underneath it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it just feels like there's a – brings you back. And even the weather's kind of mm-hmm. the way it was back in that early May time. Yeah. A little rainy. There's a nostalgic feeling for sure. But I just feel so different, like I'm a different human. Yeah. And when was that? It's been a year and probably five months. Okay, it's about a year and a half. Yeah. 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 Time goes by so fast. Yeah. What what was your self-care like? Or and I know it's a buzzword and people talk about this self-care, but we talk about it a lot this week, you know, during during the Academy of Healing and try to get you engaged and understand a mindfulness and meditation and give some examples of self-care. But what what was your version of self-care before we met? I mean, it was like I was comedy about it. That was my thing is that um, I didn't have time to take care of myself. You know, I had so many people to take care of. I had their records. I had to train them. I had to make sure they were going to return home to their families. And I didn't have time to overlook my stuff, my anything, you know, and I, I was a heavy smoker, Mm -hmm. big time heavy smoker. And I would have guys, you know, those are going to kill you. And I'd say, yeah, so it was a well-placed missile. <laughs> so mind your business, you know? And so and that was seriously my thought is like, I'm doing this really dangerous work. Right. So I don't really care that this is a long-term health problem. I'll yeah. quit. Sometime I'll quit if I don't take the right bullet, you know? Right. So, and I, I mean, the other thing I was famous for, or at least I thought I was, I thought it was pretty hilarious that I had a thing with cookies, I would say, you know? You, know, you never know if this is your last cookie. <laughs> and like, if you're living this healthy life and you're going right. out and all of a sudden you're going down in a crash, fiery Blackhawk crash. And I'm thinking, I should have ate the damn cookie. <laughs> I could have ate the cookie. So I was like, I eat the cookie every time before the mission because I never know. And that was kind of a morbid humor to me, but right. I was kind of serious about it. I, I didn't really care. I thought, I don't know, I'll fix these silly you know, diet problems and yeah. smoking problems. I wasn't a big drinker, but I did enjoy, you know, on occasion having like way too much to drink and being stupid and fun. But yeah, it wasn't a super thing for me, but I lifted weights, okay. you know, so that I could look like I was strong. Right. I like to be kind of an intimidating big guy. Yeah. It was more for looks than it was anything mm-hmm. else. And uh, I used to say, I just wanted to look good naked when everybody would ask me if <laughs> You know, just a smart aunt, like about it. Um, with a cookie? Yeah. Like with a cookie. cookie. Yeah. <laughs> and a cigarette? And c- cigarette and in one like, hand. I've never seen a guy that lifts weights with smudged cigarettes like you do. And I'm like, you know, I'm a, I'm a puzzle. Um, but that was because I just didn't, I guess I didn't know I didn't feel healthy. I just, I knew that I was really hitting it at work. Right. My professional I was going incredibly well. Um, I was trusted by everyone. But, you know, I just didn't see a gap in self-care. I just didn't uh, mm-hmm. see a problem until then when I retired. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, well, now why are you smoking? Because you're not going to take that missile. Mm-hmm. 
you know, well, well now why are you eating the cookie? Yeah. And it's like, because so it's like, now I'm running out of good excuses yeah. on that kind of stuff. You know, so I, I tried um, bicycling. I was big time into gravel cycling. Mm. And for a while I went way overboard until I kind of injured mm. myself. I had some injuries and I, that was my thing is, is uh, not knowing where to draw a line. Everything to, like I would always say, you know, if it's that, that's good. More is better. Uh, yeah, kind of extreme. So I'd go really adrenaline, hard. looking for that adrenaline. So that was my thing. Turns out, you know, that that was kind of always my problem. My adrenaline system was broken, and is broken still mm -hmm. to this day. That um, it doesn't know how to. Once I get a little taste of that adrenaline, it doesn't know how to stop. Yeah, and it just pours, you know, all of it and goes all the way. So I can go all the way up until I hit blood tox toxicity. Really. And then kind of see colors and weird things. So to find techniques, one, I did not understand this. Yes. I didn't know that was happening to me. Right. And when I found the right psychiatrist with the right, he, he explained it to me. And it's like, this is a, you're, this is a physical broken mm -hmm. war trauma. This right. is a, this is a combat injury. Yes. Right here. Because, and there's a lot of us out there, by the way. To have this same thing where you were just in fight or flight for so long mm -hmm. to the point where you just it ruins either your pituitary gland yep. your thyroids and your amygdala becomes enlarged your amygdala right and it hijacks your hippocampus so all of this you get brain fog yeah you can't focus you you know you're having to read the same page over and over again if you're trying to study or read something or that's right somebody has a conversation with you and you're just like wait what what can you repeat that what did you just say you know, and uh, and it was weird because I was used to be very high performing, and and it felt as if then I was just slipping. Mm. Something's wrong. Yeah, with me. I'm slipping, and I and I wasn't able to like bury and hide the things, not only from my family, but from myself. Right, that were wrong with me. Yeah, you know what I mean. That I knew that this whole I got to start taking better care of myself, and then I decided I had to go for the magic pill you know mm. that was the way to go so i found some guys that were going to do stem cells right and these stem cells they're going to extract from my own body you know and then push them into my brain mm -hmm. and through my spinal cord and i let these people do this and the thing it did for me is the very next day i threw cigarettes in the trash can and never That's smoked good. another cigarette yeah um, I went from like two and a half packs a day to zero because instantaneously you wouldn't believe how much this costs to try this experimental thing to have it not really do anything. But I thought it would be so stupid that I would pay that kind of thing and take these kind of risks no. and still smoke cigarettes. Yeah. It's just stupid. When it was logical to me, they were gone. Right. I was struggled. I struggled really hard. I didn't know. I went through a lot of problems that I thought were mental when they were withdrawal symptoms from nicotine it's very mm. robust because i'd smoked so hard and so long but now i mean i i can already be around the smell of it and you know i hate to be one of those guys that's a bad ex-smoker but i just the smell yeah i think i can't believe you did that for how much how much pleasure that brought me yeah pleasure yeah well you tell yeah. yourself that yeah right? we convince ourselves of these things when and it's probably in a sense, some sense of avoidance, some coping mechanism of what you're trying to avoid. You know, the other thing I realized, I, it was exactly a coping mechanism when I got out because I grew this huge beard. I mean, huge. And I smoked constantly. And you know what? People stayed away from me, which is exactly what I realized I was doing. I was right. putting up a big sign that said, stay the hell away from me. You know, I'm going to make it so foul to be around me that you just won't want to be, you know. Right. I'll be scary looking intimidating looking smoke constantly you know growling yeah and that's kind of who i was for, for a while so what's your self-care regimen like today so now you know um i'm not going to say i should be writing books on how to do fitness and all this stuff but the difference being like the the one thing that was always my biggest nightmare was when i was triggered for whatever reason mm -hmm. whether it was stupid thing in traffic or whether it was just somebody you know disobeying the rules that's what i hated the most mm -hmm. disobeying the rules or something I, here it comes and i would start feeling the anxiety and so now i begin not box breathing but i like what we did which was the eight seconds in 
hold it for four, yeah. eight seconds out, mm. hold it for four. But I do about four circuits of that, and it starts to feel it taming that chemical dump. Yeah. I feel it taming it for me. So the foundation for you is the breath. Breathing turned my life around. I, so I do it all the time, and I, you know, I just start this breathing. Yeah. And it, like... I mean, I, I watched a guy yesterday start to give his story and he started shaking a little bit and right. he started niching. Yeah. Um, so I started my breathing and it fixed it right away, you know, two, three cycles of it. And so like, and I'm telling people this all the time, whenever I see him, I'm like, you got to just try. Breathe. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of times I'll join hands. Like my girlfriend and I will breathe together. Oh, that's amazing. And it is amazing. That's and it's like doubles, it doubles the impact when yeah. two are in sync with it. It really does. So, um, that was a big thing for me is breathing out of a situation or just practicing that breathing when I'm not in a situation because mm -hmm. it just brings me an ultra level of calmness. Yes, that's true. So like I will visit, uh, I like to go to Reiki. Okay. And uh, uh, my, I don't know what you call it, my big Reiki master. Yeah. Master. That's she's it. really cool. She's awesome. Yeah. Um, but she breathes and I just fall in sync with her breathing mm -hmm. and do it for like usually go for a 90 minute thing and she does all kinds of like i don't know what it is but i just come out of there some hippie stuff yeah some seriously cool hippie stuff <laughs> you know and sometimes she goes did you see something and i'm like i did i would see this and she goes, you want to know what i saw and i'm like do you saw <laughs> i didn't expect you to see something you know but she's really neat and uh so but I just think even even if it's nothing more than ninety minutes of me in a sinking yeah. breath with you know, um, and I definitely she's doing energy stuff, which I would have probably not laughed at. My father was really into this when I was a child, but I I was embarrassed by it really because I got bullied a little uh, bit, picked on. They didn't get picked it. on, but then I would beat people up because I didn't like to pick on my dad. Right, but it was embarrassing that he was all into this stuff and. Um, so I think I shy push it away just because I'm like, God. now I'm like, you know what? Bring it. Yeah. Like I will try this. This is stuff that's, I call it my onboard uh, pharmacology lab mm -hmm. or my own tools because all of a sudden I need to change my affect and I can breathe my way into yes. it. I can think my way out of bad situation and in, into a better situation, which commonly makes me stop any kind of action I was going to do. There's some horrible phrase I was about right. to say, scream probably in the past. And I hold on to it and I get to a spot where I'm not emotionally out of my mind. Awesome. And I can think and I can go, you know what? Let me de-escalate right now mm -hmm. because I think I said that poorly or I was miscommunicated and I can understand how that would occur or whatever. So now I can work my way through reason and logic which is something i like yes because now i'm not emotionally um you're more driven. emotionally yeah you're more emotionally regulated yeah so the breath is your foundation and what it's provided is a path for you to be centered and grounded but mindful and being present in the moment and yeah present in the moment's another huge thing for me mm -hmm. um how has that how's that changed your relationships with people I mean, it's all diff completely different. If you're living for, like, I feel like I lived for the future all the time. Okay. I got to really work hard right now because I'm going to just store up all of this, you know, nest egg. Yes. So that then we can have the future of our dreams. Right. Way down there, though. Mm -hmm. So meantime, I'm destroying what I'm doing by being out here working hard on something. So, you know, what I found out is when I finally attained this land and the home right. and the shop and the barns and the, got you know, I lost it all because I was a miserable person. Yeah. You know, and so now it's like, you know, I just want to find the people that I want to be around right. that make me not feel, I don't know, I used to, have to get that feeling of here it comes, like just being around people. Yeah. Now I just don't do that. Yeah, the uneasy feeling. Yeah. Do you think, you know, one of the things that I preach a lot this week is unconditional love and acceptance? Yeah. How does that resonate with you? Well, that's another one that really helps. And I it's something I have to practice more and more all the time. Something I need to keep getting better at. Is like for instance, I think my worst thing is driving around in traffic and it's like, you know, like 
Oh, well, <laughs> well, maybe that person. Yeah. Like, I don't know why that person right. just did that. Yeah. But maybe they have a whole thing going on that I don't understand. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with me. So take me out of the equation. Yes, some empathy, you know. some understanding. I, but I, it's hard. And um, But other people, you know, there's times that personal relationships that are like, I, they could be way better and they're going to be. Right. And I have some faith. Yeah. And all I can do is just say I'm here and I love you. And I know it's not ideal. Yeah. It'll get better. You know, it's going to get better. Yeah. And, um, you love and accept yourself and you begin to love and accept others. And, you, and and that's the part of that tribe is you'll be around those people that respect you. You know, not the yeah. social comparisons and not the judgment. Yeah. I'm not saying I go to isolation. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Um, I just, and I'm not saying dump all your friends and find all new friends. I'm not saying stuff like that. I'm just saying it naturally is working itself into a point where the positivity and the thinking and the, and the lifestyle kind of sorts that out. Yeah. Yeah, those you'll find that attraction. You'll be more attracted to those people. Those people will be attracted to you, and the other people will fall off. It's kind of like how I say, you know, relationships are seasonal, and some seasons last a lot longer than others, and some of them are right. a lot shorter than others. Yeah. And it's okay. It's not like it's okay. judgment or criticism through that journey, it's, that path. We learned, we grew, we connected, but there's different... transitions all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and transitioning out of the military seemed like the hardest thing. And in addition to transitioning through relationships, so. These people may not know what did what what did you do in the military? So I was a you know I was a helicopter pilot, um, a UH sixty Black Hawk mm -hmm. helicopter, and I flew that thing throughout my whole twenty years. So I I, I went in as a warrant officer candidate, okay, and went through warrant officers. So I went to basic training, okay, and I was twenty six years old though, which is weird. And then I went from straight from there right to uh, lower Alabama where they put me in warrant officer candidates. Right. Training. So you basically do 14 weeks, just like the officer candidates. Okay. Those, but they break it up. And then I was, you know, for a uh, flight school. So that's right where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, Fort Rucker now for Nova cell, okay. Alabama. And uh, I spent about a year and a half going through flight school there. Wow. And it is kind of a merit based system on what, aircraft they're going to choose you yes and you put in like i want to fly i wanted to fly the chinook which is oh, the yeah, big, the big one yeah yeah because i thought the big there would be a ton of work afterwards right. with that aircraft because i'd see it you know doing things out and around i thought it's the aircraft I want. but um so at the end of the day uh, there was two of us there was only one chinook and the guy um <laughs> was like a, a tenth of a point higher than me he oh, got you got it yeah, and so then I got Blackhawks, which I'm so glad I did. I didn't, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted. Right. It's very versatile, and uh, I had a great career and I, amazing people all over the world. Yeah, so I'm glad I got that helicopter. Well, that's a definitely a blessing. What one of the things I know that I think of, and you brought it up, of your version of self care, I've seen is a creative expression. Yeah, you make these amazing, beautiful thank you tables. Uh, they're very inspirational, and it. To me, it, it looks very laborious. Like I, I look at that and I'm like, man, that would take me, I think, like a year to create. What? Well, how long does it take you to make one of these tables? And what? What's that journey like when you see this wood? And can you imagine like what what resin and what you want to do with this table when you see the wood? What is? Yeah, it's weird because I don't know until I always say it's gonna. It tells me what it's gonna do. Like I, I seriously don't know, and I don't feel. I don't feel very talented at it. And I feel like it's super amateur, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that sort of imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. or but either way, it brings me a ton of peace to take like a piece of wood. Like last year's, it was just some ugly, somebody just chopped this tree down and pushed it over. And a guy was like, that's a burl from a red oak. You know, he knew yeah. what it was. And he took it and he slabbed it out. And, you know, it's like, wow look at that beautiful thing you know right. it's like that spoke to me because that one just like character like crazy sometimes i just go to these stores and look at these slabs and i'm just like that guy and i i don't really know what i'm going to do okay or how i'm going to do it or what color it's going to be and this is why i don't like to do custom people are like will you build me a table and i'm like ah, because you're going to have an expectation on what right. i want it to look like and i I don't really do it that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's not an accident that it comes out the way it does, but it's just like, 
it's an ongoing thing. I mean, I know I'm going to turn it into, let's say, a river table, which just right. means in the middle, there's going to be something. It doesn't mean it's going to look like yeah. a river. river. It's just a gap. Yeah. Yeah. And I went through, I've gone through a bunch of different techniques to the, where I'm doing what I'm doing now, which now I'm super happy with it. Yeah. And then I lost my place. I do it. And it's been really difficult to find a place. It's real messy. Yes. You know, but I've been spending a lot of time, a lot of time doing it and missing out on a lot of things. And I still go see a therapist. So I went and saw her and I said, I want to know if I'm going into a more of an isolation thing an avoidance thing mm -hmm. or am i doing something good by spending all these hours staring at this stuff thinking right. thinking thinking it takes me away because i'm gonna tell you right now the news is bad yes. really bad with world war three right on here right. right and i'm like all of a sudden i can't stop looking at it yeah and then i hear i feel and i'm like i don't want to feel this way so i can't i gotta get away from the news right so i can go and do this creative work where I feel lost and it's gone yes. and I'm like, is that avoidance? And she said, no, no, it's, no, it's not. It's creative. It's self care. Right. You're not running from something. You're running to something. Yeah. So you're not running from these things that are toxic or negative, but you're running to this life of abundance and joy and peace, as well as your bliss. My other question for you is if you could go back into the military or if you were recalled today, right? What would your self care regimen? How would that change today, pre and post deployment? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing, as I look back, the biggest mistake I made was to avoid the symptoms of what was happening. Mm, avoidance. Avoidance. I I knew something wasn't the same, but I was looking to my left and my right, and nobody else was saying anything. Right. So I gave it a little more time and looked around some more. Nobody else is saying anything. They're still having, like, they're integrating right with their family. Yeah. They're driving around doing fine. They're, everything's fine. So I'm like, I guess it's just me and I haven't handled this well. So mm. I'll just suck it up, rub some dirt on it, try harder. Right. Work harder. You know, and so that's what I did. And uh, until it was so cumulative that it just became as toxic as it did. So, you know, I, I visited a, a guy that was a company commander and then was a battalion commander when I just visited him. And I said, how is it going with all this? And he said, you wouldn't believe how many guys and gals are going to behavior to help. Right. Like he said, I have the hardest time getting the mission done because people go openly to behavior help. And this is aviation. So right. as a flight status guy, there's no calling to see a train. No, we'd lose our clearance instantly. Yeah. Clearance. Yes. I have a clearance I have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Not not top secret. Right. But still. And then my flight status is in jeopardy because if they gave me a mood uh, altering mm -hmm. drug, such as like a depression drug, that's a year after the effects are missing, which they'll say like two, three months after you stop taking it. Right. So what, you want me to take something, then I'm like, career's over? Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. So then you think I'm going to say anything? I have the family. I have a career to do, you know? And wow, I'm bought in. Right. I'm all on. I want to be a CW5. I want to reach yeah. the pinnacle. I want to lead into the future. You know, it's now, it's really difficult because I wanted to get the mission done. Right. So I want them both to happen, but I don't know how you do that. So the reason I speak out so much is because. I was somebody who was high performing at a high level who had to hide it. Yeah. And I'm saying that's terrible outcomes for people. You know, and it's not probably good for the, the mission. No. Either. Uh, well, but to me, I think it would be more of if we had a, a, a safe place to talk and share. Right. With no repercussions. And a lot of times, I, you know, the easiest way to do that is to journal. You know, at least you're writing and expressing, you know, journaling is the marriage between the mind and the body. I'm expressing thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Uh, you can always rip it out and burn it. And I'd say, you know, just make sure that you're not sharing anything that would jeopardize a mission or any type of security type of aspects. Just See, your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I did journal, them. but I, I've read those journals and they were horrible. I was horrible to myself because yeah. I used 
negative talk to motivate myself. Yeah. Get up, you lazy bum. Get off your butt, you know. Go out there. Quit being such a wimp. You know, um, those are the kinds of things I would write with myself because they were serving. Right. Because I did get up off my bum and I did go do the things that drove actions that I needed to do. But it was it is not the way to live your life. It is not the way to accomplish stuff. No. Because there's a because there's an effect, you know, with every, you know, it was a big effect. And I said, I'm the only one. I looked around. Right. And I'm, I come to find out. You're not. All the time. Like, every time I get into a war and descent, come to find out, they're all saying the same thing. Wow. Yeah. I thought I was the only one. Now. And it's the common thing. Yeah. And that's why I don't care if it's first responder, Department of Corrections. I don't care where you serve. You dedicated yourself to others. Yes. You're a servant leader that cared about everything above yourself. Yeah, you gave it all. And after so much time, two decades, three decades, six years, yeah. that's so ingrained in you. Right. You know, there's got to be a way that we can deprogram or that we can, in the middle of it, go, listen, it's okay to feel the way you're feeling. You're not wrong. We're not going to go to meds. Yeah. We're going to go to medic. We're going to go to meditation. Yeah. We're going to leave instead of you all going and doing push ups and sit ups and a two mile run. We're going to do yoga. Right. We're going to introduce, uh, you know, mindfulness about right. being present and what you are right now. Yeah. Because it's like the same thing with the cookie. Yeah. The cookie represented to me. You know what was great in life, and it should be every day is my cookie. Yeah. Every day when I wake up and I want to my left and right, that's the big cookie that I'm going to eat it because I don't know, but I'm probably not going to get killed for that. <laughs> like before, right? Probably <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But now it's really low. Yeah, true. That's true. So another trans, you know. So I, I, I think that's once I could really feel it take off that. Um, it's a lot of useful feeling. Anything else you want to share? No, that, uh, you know, Warren's Ascent, um, and it has led me to the relationship with you at my case and you as an after, you know, aftercare thing. Because listen, it's a four and a half day high intensity workshop. Retreat is a very slippery word. You're not with, you're at this camp. Yeah. But that's about all this luxury about it. You're going to work hard in mind, body, and spirit. You know? right. And no when you leave, it's not magic. Right. right? You have to keep employing this stuff over and over every day. And even when you've messed up, you look back and say, you know what I haven't been doing? I haven't been doing this and that. So, right. so I, need to, I need to double down. Mike Kenny said it to me the very first time. Double down. Don't yeah. quit. Double down. And I was like, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you used to say. Right. And instead of being so negative, that's a good way to talk to yourself. Yeah. A positive way to dedicate yourself and bring yourself that dedication. Yeah. So I agree. And bring that same power that I used to bring to the troops and to myself. Well, awesome. Well, brother, thanks for sharing. Yeah. I appreciate thanks for it. having me, man. I appreciate yeah. it. This is this this business is really important and I really care. I'm, I'm, you know, you there, and uh, you definitely have, have made a new definition of what unconditional love is. <laughs> we, all, we all know that and feel that. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Um, and thanks for sharing about your self care journey and PTS and being vulnerable today. I know it's a challenge, and yeah. it's tough for men a lot of times to share those stories because sometimes we, we look and think we're going to feel weak, right? But it's right. just the emotions and the things that we've avoided. So, Thanks again, brother. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Thanks.